everybody, welcome back to a very special episode of Between Sermons because it was Easter weekend and uh, we're going to kind of recap some things and uh, we closed out uh, a series talking about how we can become more like Jesus. So it was, it was a very big uh, weekend here at CLC and uh, so I brought in two friends to uh, to help me uh, talk about all this fun stuff. Let's do it. Uh, Pastor Carlton's pretty, uh, pretty recognizable uh, on the podcast. I think he's our default guest. Uh, no, the celebrity, <laughs> dun dun dun. Uh, but to balance out all of that, we brought in the lovely Pastor Katie. Thank you. Thank so you. glad you could be here. Thanks. Your first time on the show, actually. First, first time I'm a newbie. Yeah, we'll look see at how that. this goes. Yeah, we <laughs> we dragged you in uh, after your your Easter coma. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, let's talk. <laughs> I'm still waking up from my Easter coma, but and the rookie has to do all the talking. That's uh, what oh, happens. Help me, Lord. Help. <laughs> Yep, that's Thank essentially you. how it goes. I'm just here to watch the two of you uh, have a great conversation great. Awesome. about everything. Love it. Uh, but I, I want to kind of jump in uh, with Good Friday because uh, Pastor Carlton, you you delivered us the seven last words of Jesus. Yep. Uh, which is always a little weird. I, it, I guess I understand the idea that it's seven words as in things he said, but it, it does right. in my head. Seven like statements. I want to count. I want to count <laughs> no, seven actual, actual words, actual seven and words. it's like. Yeah, the seven words of Jesus were Which actually like, like 87, <laughs> 87 <laughs> words. Uh, so it's a little bit different. But, uh, man, walk me through, like, preparing to speak on Good Friday, going back into uh, – because one of the interesting things about this is not each of the Gospels give you all of, exactly, of the yeah. last phrase. You're so you kind of have to piece lot. through yeah. – and create this timeline based on, okay, what did Matthew say? What did Mark say? What did Luke say? Yes. Um, and so talk, talk about that process. A little yeah. Bit. So the, the one thing that really helps is my reading style, how I read the Bible in cr chronological order. Mm -hmm. And so reading it in chronological order, you get like, it jumps around. So you yeah. get all seven statements that do, Jesus makes. Do you makes. use like a chronological, bi like a physical chronological Bible or do no, you man, use like a, version. a new version yeah. of the chronological plan? <laughs> yeah. I did the, I did that plan like four or five years ago. Yeah. Cool. I, I do it every year because I like to read the Bible as one big mm. story. Cause I'm the kind of guy that wants to know what happens next, right. you know? And so that helps me, you know, get a big picture of the Bible. But yeah, the, so the process in preparing for it was, um, understanding you know where the statements are in each book of the gospels and then for me I, i'm because i like stories i want to know how do we get here mm -hmm. you know and so i had to go back through the night before um of jesus being you know tried and then the torturing process mm -hmm. starting and it was like that was so impactful for me mm -hmm. reading it that i was like i have to add this in there to give it some more weight yes because you don't really get um, you know, the full weight of what he's saying on the cross unless, unless you know what he's been through. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get to the cross and you say, how in, how in the world is he even talking at this mm -hmm. point? Yeah, yeah. You know, because he's got to pull himself up to breathe. Right. If he says anything at all, it's going to be the, the most important thing that, he's gonna, that he has said in 100%. his life. And so I wanted to kind of walk us through the pain and the suffering that he went through yeah. leading mm -hmm. up to the cross. Mm -hmm. And then you really understand, okay, he's on this cross mm -hmm. for three to six hours. He says seven things. These seven things must be vitally they important. Matter. And yeah. so that was part of the process of, yeah. of building well, and, this. And, and even just to think about the fact that like the, the beating that he took <clears throat> on his back, I mean, his, his back is like hamburger meat. Oh at, yeah, at it's point. open, completely open. And in order to breathe, in order to ex, or what is it, inhale, yeah. you, you have to, to push up, yeah. which means his back is scraping, scraping against, against solid wood. A cross, piece of wood right. that I don't know, I'm I'm doubting the Romans took the time to sand that thing down to a nice smooth finish. No. That just the the sheer agony, the sheer pain of going through that. Mm. Not only is it sobering for us to to see, man, the 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 pain that he was going through. Yeah. But it does, as you said, it adds weight yeah. to these things that he says because it's not like you know he just was talking for the sake of talking. Right. It, it was wasn't conversation. Every single right. phrase, every yeah. word out of his mouth was intentional. It was mm -hmm. purposeful. And I, I love the way you were able to just walk us through kind of the significance of each of those things. Yep. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, forgiveness, um, you know, meeting him in paradise, uh, him taking care of his mother is a reflection of how he takes care of us. Yep. Um, as well as, you know, taking care of the sins of all the world at the same time. Yeah. And then you get 
a glimpse of the intimacy he has with the father as well, mm -hmm. yeah. which is really important. I think that, you know, we tend to forget that, you know, we have a selfish Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Jesus is only here for us and, right. you know, to, to save to save us from our sins. But the intimacy that he had with his father mm -hmm. in those last, you know, two days yeah. is great. You know, he's crying out to his father in the garden mm -hmm. in prayer. And then he's talking to him on the cross. Mm -hmm you know, confirming that it is finished, giving him his life into the hands of the father, right. crying out to God when the sins are on Jesus's back. Yeah. You know, why aren't you looking at me? Why aren't you here right now? You know, uh, quoting David from Psalms. Yeah. And so there, there's a lot going on there and it's it's really powerful. Yeah. No, I think for, for me that him quoting David <clears throat> Uh, quoting the song, yeah. like th for me, that's the one that has so much depth and significance to it. When you take into account the struggle, the agony of just saying anything, mm -hmm. and so of all of the Psalms of David yeah. that he could he could quote, he 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 references the Messianic Psalm. Yeah, he could have quoted anything. Yeah, but he he <laughs> quotes the Psalm that David writes about himself, about yeah, Jesus, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it it's one of those things that just sparks. Like if 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 we'll, we'll use Katie as the example, if Katie were to start singing a song right now, uh, yeah, the lyrics would come to our head immediately, exactly, right? Like we, we right. would finish it out, right? And so, like for his audience to be able to finish, so in saying, "My God, My God, why have you forsaken me?" Mm. He actually, if you read Psalm twenty-two, it, like that's a that's a lot of words. Yeah, mm -hmm. he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in just quoting that first line, like right. to me, that's just that's just and the so the the people that are surrounding the cross, watching this take place have the lyrics of David's yeah. song in their head right. and they're watching it in action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now they're thinking, okay, my bones are out of joint. Mm -hmm. They've yeah. pierced me. My hands have been pierced. Uh, the, the soldiers hands and feet. Yeah. The soldiers are, are fighting over the garments Yes, in front of like, and they're the, watching it happen. Yeah. yeah. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And you get the realization, like the Roman soldier and Mark who says, this is, this is the son of son God. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a beautiful thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so for both of you, the question is of the seven things that Jesus said, which one hit you the biggest? Like, which one was like that man? That's 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 impressive. That's powerful. That's life changing. That's yeah. inspiring. That's, <laughs> life changing. It's all. Life if you got to if you got to but if you got to pick one, pick pick one of the seven. Man, one. Tough. I mean, I I love the way that we approached the. Um, like I'm not, I'm not going to quote it correctly, <laughs> but he says, woman, here is your son. Yep. Yeah. Here is son. Your mother. That right. the approach that you took to that, just the humanity in that, that as he's dying, he's still thinking of yes. others. He's yeah. still connecting people together and yeah. caring after people. That to me really struck me in a way that I've never heard before. Yeah. So that was impactful to me. I think, yeah how can you go with anything anything but it is finished you know that <laughs> yes. is like so right. final yes. that is such that is the word we live by yeah. is it is finished for us right. we don't have to do the work we don't have to strive anymore right. that to me is just i don't know you live in the it is finished yep yeah it, it it is finished is great because it's not just finished for that moment of right. him dying it's not just yeah. finished of the 33 years he lived on earth it is finished for all of creation leading up to that mm -hmm. point and then now for all of eternity yeah, right, it is finished right and so it's like it is finished is everything like yeah. it's everlasting to yes. everlasting it's not just the moment and then with uh him taking care of his mother that was such a strategic plan because he knows yeah what's like he knows his family dynamic mm -hmm. what's going to happen with his half brothers he understands the disciples aren't going to be around right. and he's got one that he's preserving yep. mm. to take care of his mother. And John has other tasks to do, too. I mean, he writes, you know, the Gospel of John, yeah. then he's going to see Jesus again and and write down what Jesus tells him yeah. for Revelation. And so, like the strategy that Jesus uses to take care of Mary mm -hmm. yeah. and as a reflection of his strategy and plan for me and how he's going to take care of me. It reminded me of when Jesus healed the paralyzed man who mm. came down through the roof and he forgave him of his sins first. Yeah. yeah. And that's the pattern of the statements that Jesus makes. Mm. He forgave. He says, you're going to meet me in paradise. And then he takes care of our personal needs. Right. He forgave that man mm. of his sins. 
And then he turned around and had a conversation with the Pharisees and then came back to the man and said, okay, now you're healed, take up your mat and walk. And so like, that was really powerful for me. But I think for me, back to the question, uh, the forgiveness of sins, like forgive them for they know not what they do. Mm. The fact that Jesus intercedes on my behalf to the Father in my sin Mm -hmm. is just amazing to me. Like he's seeking my salvation in a way that I can't even comprehend. Like when, when I'm in my wrongdoings and in my sin, Jesus is interceding on my behalf for the father to forgive me so I can get back right with him. Yeah. And it, that, like that for me, that was just like, man, he loves me even through my sin. Yeah. And that's just amazing. Well, that, that moment is so sobering too for, for anybody that's been hurt by someone else or have, has yeah. gotten to a place where it's like, I, I can't forgive them. Mm. Like, right. it, it, and, and I've had people tell me like, Brent, if you, if you even knew what that person did to me, you wouldn't mm-hmm. be telling me that I'm supposed to forgive them because no. And then Jesus demonstrates it right. yeah. on the cross. Like right. I'm like they, they crucified forgive, Jesus. Forgive them. Yeah. Like the yeah. the guy that was whipping me five minutes ago. <laughs> the, the guy that drove the nail in my hands. Right. Like, mm-hmm. like the crowd that's spitting on me. For, forgive yeah. those people. Right. Wow. Like while we were yet in sin, yeah. came. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That was that was that'll mess with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. yeah it, it it man, it's hard to pick a pick a favorite. Um, but I, I like all those. Yeah. I, I love what you teased out even about um you know the uh woman this is this is your son son this is your your mother um the fact that he chose the youngest of his disciples yeah Mm -hmm. uh the fact that he chose the one that um was the only one that was gonna live Mm. (laughs) it's like the the rest of these guys they're dead in 10 years (laughs) they're not gonna make it (laughs) but that guy (laughs) he's got five books he's got to write yeah Uh, you know he's gonna end up on the island of patmos and right right. you know he'll he'll be all right you know he's got some time you know yeah mary will be long dead he's gonna be out he's gonna outlive (laughs) mary yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's like all right this this is the one i'm gonna pick (laughs) yeah it's just a beautiful thing. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. The, just the way that, that God orchestrates everything. Mm. Yeah. Um, I know you, you kind of struggle with one, uh, the, uh, you know, I'm thirst. I thirst. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. You're like, man, yeah. I hate the idea that Jesus is like self-fulfilling a prophecy. Yeah. It's the last but, prophecy that he needs to fulfill yeah. of the mm-hmm. 300 plus that he fulfilled. Yeah. It's like, Jesus, you could have just left that one out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I love that he Good. didn't. Like, I love yeah. that he didn't. And and sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like the one thing that he had control over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas everything else he can't really control. But even in that, like him saying, I thirst, like mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that they're going to respond. Right. Like, so right like, absolutely. Like the true. prophetic right. word that they're going to give yeah. him vinegar uh, in yeah. that moment, it's mm-hmm. it's yeah. still accurate. It's, right. It still happens. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think that that's, e- even <laughs> for me, like that one, even though you, you kind of struggle with it. Like, why like, did you say that? <laughs> why did, did he really have to? Like, man, but he, look, there's still 299 plus yeah. <laughs> right. that he had no kind of control over right. and it still yeah. took place. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, I just love the idea that our savior didn't leave anything unfinished. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so when, when he says, when he finally does say it is finished, like yeah. it's, it's like, yeah, he, he checked off every, every mm-hmm. box. He yeah. did everything he was there supposed to no do. There's no question. There's that nothing he's left undone. Right. Like it's, I don't know. There's just a beautiful thing about that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Man, good Friday. Good Friday. I have to say, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I feel like I love Good Friday services more than I love the Easter service. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's okay. something so beautiful and yeah. intimate yeah. about the it. The intimacy of it's it, right? The intimacy yes. for me. Yeah. I love Easter, and I obviously we live in a resurrected yeah. work, right? right? God has finished the thing. But there's something about um to me it's similar to like it's easy to say happy birthday to somebody yeah it's really difficult to say i'm gonna go and bring you food while you're sick yeah yeah it's more intimate when in to live in that space with someone versus to celebrate with someone and so easter feels like the big thing we celebrate yeah but good friday is that intimate moment that we enter into spaces that only the closest people can connect inside of it's yeah. so relational yeah. that I just every Good Friday it just it hits me in a new spot in an yeah. intimate way out of relationship to the Father that you're able to to remember yeah. what Jesus did yeah. to such a level and live yeah. in that space for just a moment instead of living in this celebration space that we love to live in, especially yeah. on Sundays as we go to church. We're gonna I need my fill of good things yeah. to live in that intimacy with 
with God and with Jesus to right. remember what they did. It's such a reminder, yeah. even in our relationship with God, that Love he it. wants all the emotion, all yeah. the deep yeah. spaces, not just the shallow good stuff, but he wants you to bring True. those yeah. intimate, deep, dark things to the table yeah. in relationship. That just, I don't know. Good Friday no, does I'll, it for I, me every time. I'll, I'll, I'll join you in being unpopular. <laughs> uh, I, I, but I, I think I'd even take it a step further. I think uh, Easter becomes about so many other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so like it's, you know, are the kids all dressed nice? Right. Are we get our family photo. Right. And Easter what are we doing lunch. for our, you know, our Easter <laughs> celebration? <bunnies. Dinner. laughs> yeah, are we going to have our mm -hmm. Easter meal? And, yeah. and so it's like. It becomes like a cultural thing. It yeah. becomes, you know, it's like Christmas. Right. Yeah, like, right. and, like and yes, we take time to recognize we're celebrating the resurrection mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. that. But it seems like we take a moment within the day to recognize what right. it's about. Whereas Good Friday, it's it's there is no it's family yeah. dinner. Right. There's Super no focused. like it's just this is about the cross, and we don't. Man, this is controversial. I guess say. we don't corrupt it. Yeah. With with anything right. else, whereas right. you know, right. sometimes Sunday, you know, Easter Sunday can feel a little bit corrupted mm -hmm. uh, outside mm -hmm. of the church, inside the church, just True. kind of across the board. But thousand percent. Good Friday is just it, it is. There's no confusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no yeah. doubt of what what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that's yeah. Yeah. The, the stage was beautiful. Mm -hmm. The worship set was perfect. Yeah. I love how we ended it and we didn't yeah. say anything. We just left Silence. out of the auditorium, yes. left out of the building. Mm -hmm. In remembrance. Yeah, yeah, and it it had held that moment for us yes. instead of the, you know, talking to each other, finding the person yeah. that you know you haven't seen in a while or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just like, no, I'm gonna stay in this moment mm -hmm. until I go home. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it took about ten minutes in the lobby before somebody finally like laughed, <laughs> and then other people were like, "Oh, okay, like, oh, it's okay." okay. <laughs> like, but uh, no, I I do I I love the. <clears throat> that just quiet stillness, the intimacy mm -hmm. of it, just mm -hmm. the, the somberness mm -hmm. of it. And I think that sometimes, you know, it's really easy for us to go through a, a Good Friday knowing that Sunday is coming. But when I try and put myself in the perspective mm -hmm. of the disciples, right? like Saturday, no. Saturday was a dark day. Yes. Tough. It was dark. Is yeah. this like, do you feel like, I, I was thinking about this the other day, I felt like the disciples probably felt like this was the most gaslit experience. Like I just got <laughs> gaslit by yeah. Jesus. He yeah. said this, yeah. like I'm gonna conquer yeah. yep. and he's gone and we've given up everything yep. in our lives for this yeah. guy. I'm not even sure. Yeah. Like, what do we do now? That had to feel. That's why they go back fishing. Yeah. Crazy. Like, right. Yes. They go back fishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess I better get back to what I know, was doing. And Jesus the comes back and walks with them, and they don't recognize them. And then when they break the bread at the table, then then their their eyes are open to him, and he's like, mm -hmm. "I I told you, <laughs> I was coming back. Like Sheesh. this is prophesied. Conviction. Like so." <laughs> <laughs> like, why were you so downtrodden mm. these past yeah. three days? Like, right. I don't understand. <laughs> right. It, it's like, have you ever watched a movie where, like, they totally tell you everything, like, throughout the movie, but if you're not paying attention to it, you don't. Right. It's right. like, what happened? Like, you get to the end of the movie, you're like, oh. <laughs> and, like, you have to watch it again. Like, I feel like that was, that was the disciples were like, oh, that's oh. what he meant when he oh. said you're going to destroy <laughs> the temple and build it later. Do. <laughs> Jesus is sitting there like, oh. like, once he's fully revealed to them, He's yeah. like, I told you this. Yo, was, yeah. y'all weren't paying attention. <laughs> it's like, what are you guys talking about? Just slap the yeah. forehead, kind of guy. Totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. But I mean, can you imagine? These are people who walked with Jesus yeah. every single day, and mm -hmm. just to think that we're like we're expecting people to jump right in and believe. Yeah. Like this is the way. Follow it. It takes a minute. Discipleship yeah. takes a minute yes. to follow and yeah. to understand and to live in those the 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 like Jesus yep. right. thought process right that yep. change of lifestyle takes a second because you got it like yeah. you got to imagine these disciples it took them a lifetime of just learning walking yeah. with Jesus Jesus leaves and now I got to live it out yeah. even further but right. it, even right. they had their doubts even they yeah. denied Jesus right. yep Yikes. that's, that's yeah. actually one of my favorite uh, you know so there's a lot of like evidences for why we believe the Bible why we believe it, it's true but one of the, the greatest evidences is how horribly it portrays its own writers mm. like like if if Peter is writing this story is he gonna deny 
Christ three times? Like, is, right. is he is he going to add uh, in there? Like, uh, delete yeah, and then and then Jesus called me Satan. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. Like, right. if you're making up the story, right. you do not include yeah. the details that the Gospels Absolutely give not. us. Right. <laughs> like, you make yourself look like a hero, and mm -hmm. instead the Gospels yeah, are like, and it takes these people the doubted, writers. they questioned, mm -hmm. they, they yeah. ran away in fear, mm -hmm. they were constantly in terror. Exactly. Yeah. They never understood what Jesus was talking yeah. about when right. he was talking about it. Like, And it takes, like, for Peter's example, it takes, like, Luke to point out his finer points. Mm -hmm. When Peter's giving his story to Mark to write, he doesn't even include some of the times that Jesus actually said, on this <laughs> yeah. rock, I'm going to build yeah, my yeah. church. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Peter so, doesn't even include yeah. the good stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Then that's what makes it more real. Yeah. 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 It's, it's crazy. All right. So that, that was Good Friday. Um, but Easter did come. Yes. It did. It Easter happened. Sunday. It sure did. Uh, and uh, we we got a chance to do a lot uh, on Easter Sunday. We celebrated salvations. We celebrated baptisms. It's great. We closed out uh, the series, uh, really just kind of summarized what we had been talking mm -hmm. about and just put it in simpler terms like, hey, we're going to we're going to live like Jesus. Yeah. But uh, as we kind of walk through uh, Sunday, just wanted to kind of get you guys take on on a few different things. Uh, one is the whole idea of Barabbas. Mm -hmm. So so that was the thing that hit me in preparation. I think it was maybe a month ago. I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to teach on Easter. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm going to teach on Easter. Yeah. Like as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, like Easter is it's it's, it's the worst. Yeah. It's, it's the best, uh, yeah. but it's the worst because it's like everybody has these expectations, mm -hmm. uh, but it like you have to tell a story that everybody's heard so it's mm. it's like man the, the yeah not to be like oh woe is me yeah. you know right. poor brent <laughs> uh you know such a hard job but man <laughs> preaching on easter that's that's it's, a that's yeah. a tough one yeah but um it was it was the barabbas story that mm -hmm. that just it rocked me mm -hmm. um and just this idea and i had to i had to do a lot of research because i was like i don't want to say something that isn't true right um, but all the research that I did pointed to th this idea that, um, yeah, that, that cross that Jesus hung on because of the timing, because of how quickly Absolutely, the trial moved, yeah. because of everything yeah. like that cross was already prepared for a different prisoner. Right now, can we say with 100% certainty it was Barabbas? Not with 100% certainty, but we're pretty But he positive. was next in line yeah. to be crucified. Yeah, he's and the, the only the other person speed in know. which Jesus yeah. was tried and yeah. crucified, and there's they couldn't come up with a cross the, in that right. amount And there's time. speculation that the other two thieves on the cross uh, were, um, like, um, cohorts with mm -hmm. Barabbas. Like, they were his friends. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Like, there's, there's, uh, there's theory out there that, mm. that those guys were connected. So it was like there was a plan to crucify these three guys that were caught leading this rebellion. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they replaced one of them with Jesus. And wow. for me, it's like, man, the, the, the literal and the figurative coming together yeah. in that moment is just yes. so um, incredibly powerful. beautiful yeah. yes. and powerful. And I love it. And I hate it at the same time because I'm literally <laughs> teaching a class on not replacing Bible characters. <laughs> Biblical interpretation. <laughs> with, yeah. Like, hey, <laughs> don't do this. Uh, right. And then God's like. Go ahead and do yes. it. <laughs> Just this one time. Right, right. Just one time, this is this is what it's there for. But I, lo I love changing out just the, the mentality of self-centered Christianity, which culturally yes. we want to live in. Yes. Putting ourselves where we belong, which is we are not yeah. David. Yeah. We are not. Yeah. We're not all the greats, yeah. right? Yeah. Like we are the, we are that, that guy. Yeah. The one who yeah. deserved which, to Which die. is such a, a, a crazy thing that we do because it's so uh, selective. Like we're David when he's killing Goliath, but we're not right. David when he's with Bathsheba. Right, right. Not like, that guy. Like, yes. not, like, no, 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 no. no. Like, good David. Like at that point, we switch to like maybe Nathan. We're, right. we're the ones coming in to tell <laughs> tell, tell David what's wrong. up. Right, like, right. Yeah, like a we, guy with a we're sheep so and... selective. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like we're, we're Peter when yes. he's doing good stuff. We're not yes. Peter when he's denying Jesus. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. We're so selective in in who we are when we are mm -hmm. that person. Everybody and wants to be the hero of their exactly. own story. And, right. And the Bible is about God being the hero. Right. Not us. Yeah. 100%. Uh, so I can't go fleece God in any no, kind of way. Man, <laughs> like it's just there's so many things that are just God, like prove yourself to me. <laughs> yeah. Man, people take that one like that's that's a wow. horrible one. Like yeah, literally yeah, you're Gideon. you're doing what Gideon is chastised for doing. Like, yes. Like this is bad that Gideon did it. God acquiesced to it. Like mm -hmm. God went yeah, ahead. God and had a plan. Fulfilled yes. it. Yes. But 
God wasn't happy with the idea no. of right. Gideon putting out this fleece. God, if this and is then, for me, you need okay, to. Yeah. And I've talked to so many Christians that are like, well, I'm just putting out my fleece. I'm like, stop it. Don't, <laughs> yeah, take don't it back. Yeah, bring that fleece back in. That was <laughs> that was not, we're going to talk about it tonight in, in the class I'm teaching. Like, there's prescriptive text and there's descriptive text. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, don't take something that somebody did in the Bible and all of a sudden be like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to exactly. do too. Because, right. no, you're not supposed to be watching people bathe on top of your roof <laughs> like, <laughs> no you're not supposed to be samson like yeah. samson was a horrible person he was, yeah. <laughs> like and it, it just I, I think because we glamorize like samson's story for kids mm-hmm. that you grow up being like man i want to be like samson when i grow no, up this big strong man version. it's like you realize that like his whole story is about how physically strong he was and how emotionally and spiritually weak he was mm-hmm. right yeah like it's his weakness mm-hmm. that is the highlight of the story he was not set apart from birth yeah and, and then it. broke every rule. Every <laughs> single rule. Like, every single rule. Yeah. It, 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 like, in, in one what moment, he eats something he's not supposed to eat, touches, touches something he's not animal. supposed to yeah, touch, absolutely. on his way to get with a woman that he's not supposed to be he's with. not supposed to be with, <laughs> like, right, yeah. Like, dude, Brawny this is but all, dumb. This is just <laughs> all bad. Just, just all of it. Just all of it. And then people yeah. are like, yeah, but he killed, you know, all these people with the jawbone of a donkey. He's not supposed, he's not to, supposed touch to touch anything dead. <laughs> like, he's not supposed to be touching the weapon he's using. Like, right. I don't but is that know. not how, the ultimate how, example how do we of go like from Easter to Samson's <laughs> jawbone? Right. Right. It's the ultimate example Barabbas. though of us wanting to be the hero of our own story. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he yeah. said, "Oh, I've got this strength. I can yeah. do it." Even in worship, I feel like we've just made we've. I feel like my husband and I, as we lead worship, are always thinking about how not to keep worship in a self-centered space. Yeah. Right. Because culturally, we just want to live in this like God is my champion. He's going to make everything great. I'm going to live a great life. And let's sing about that. Versus Jesus is the hero of every story. (laughs) He's where I center. And if he's magnified in me, it means I have to lay myself down. It's so hard to live that life, even in worship in in the way we read the word yep. i just thought that was such a great correction a quick but great cor- yeah, correction right. in the easter message which is it's, it's about, about jesus it's, it's about not jesus. about you yeah. right and you would think that on easter that would be like the easiest moment to, <laughs> to be like hey this is about jesus uh but man it's still it's it's tough mm-hmm. yeah uh one of, one of the best purchases i ever made this is years ago i bought uh it's called the jesus centered bible hmm. Uh, so it's a study Bible, uh, but all of the the study notes from Genesis all the way through Revelation, all of it is just about Jesus. So like in yeah, it in creation, Jesus it's in like okay, chapter. where's Jesus in right. this? And, yeah, absolutely. And you know the headings before stuff and like the little footnotes. Everything yeah. is just is just Jesus centered. Wow. And um, man, it's it's so great. Like I actually have that Bible on my desk uh, in the office right now because mm. I'll still like I'll be reading something. I'll be like, let me, man, I don't. I don't know if I can see Jesus in this. Right. I'll flip to it and it's like, oh. Right. <laughs> there he is. There he is. <laughs> like, there he is. So, yeah, yeah highly recommend Jesus Center Bible. And it, it definitely gets you out of this making yourself the center of right. the yeah. story and realize that, man, even when it's a story about David, it's actually a story about Jesus. Right, right, yeah. Um, and good. so it's it's just a really cool mm. uh, little But the, when you first brought up Barabbas and, uh, you know, to the pastors when you're going, going over the sermon, the thing that got me – it hit me right away. What was Barabbas thinking? Man. Because mm. it's like he's getting ready to die. Like they start torturing Jesus that night. Yeah. And they're probably going to start with him that night. And he, you know, comes out of the cell with the guards. And he's he's probably got all kinds of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's so sure. Yeah. yeah. He's just like, this is it. I'm going to suffer through this mm. pain and torture. And then I'm going to die. And that's mm. going to be the end of my life. Yeah. And that's it. Like he is ultimately damned. Like he yeah. he yeah. has no hope at all. He doesn't know what's going on outside. He probably doesn't know who Jesus is or have heard of Jesus, but doesn't know what's going on with Jesus' right. trial at the moment. Yeah. Like he just he is completely hopeless and, and has no clue of how God is orchestrating his release mm. through love and how Jesus is gonna replace him. Yeah. Mm. And he gets the the chains taken off of him and he's probably wondering like what's going yeah. on? Yeah. And he goes outside and then there's another, you know, thought that may have come to his head. Like he turns around and says, well, I got released because this guy is going to be crucified. Yeah. But he didn't <laughs> do anything <laughs> like the two thieves on the cross. The one thief said, no, we're justified. Like this yeah. punishment is 
justified because mm -hmm. of what we did. And, yeah. and Barabbas probably had the same thought, like, this guy's innocent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't know if that took over him being appreciative of him being set free, but I'm sure he had the moment like, no, that's supposed to be me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If, if anybody could look up at the cross and see themselves, like to see yeah. this, the, this person is dying for me, it was mm. Barabbas. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and man, it's been so long since I, I saw it, but I, I want to say passion of the Christ. Like that was one of the, the movie, like that was one mm -hmm. of the things that they did horribly. From what I remember, like when they bring out Barabbas, like he's like smiling and laughing and like from what I remember, yeah. he's he's like and, and maybe I need to watch it again. But like I, from what I remember, he's got this like arrogance about it. Mm -hmm. You did not. No, I'm sorry. There was no criminal that had arrogance. Going, Absolutely. Right. Coming out of Especially Roman the anxiety prison, Roman prison. Right. To, had, to, yeah. You no, know, no. No, you you are you are guilty of leading an insurrection against Caesar. Right. No, you are yeah. not. You are not happy. You are not excited. Not you are not laughing place. about right, this. Right. Right. Like, and and maybe I got the movie wrong, but I, there was there was one. I think it was Passion of the Christ where like they bring him out and he's like mocking and and mm -hmm. stuff, and it's mm -hmm. like no, nah, nah, that yeah. you missed that one. Yeah. Right. Like that dude was probably peeing his pants. Like, <laughs> like literally. <Yes>. Like it's just <laughs> there's yeah. no way around that. Crucifixion right. was ugly. Yeah. And, but the realization and the Romans did that, it enough that yeah. you, you knew what was yeah. coming. Oh, yeah, because people were being crucified all the time. Yeah. Like they were being crucified in the streets and in the roads yeah. leading from one place to the next. Yeah. So you knew what the punishment was for disrupting the peace Sheesh. that Rome had placed wherever yeah. they were. Yeah, it was a deterrent more right. than anything else. Mm -hmm. It was like, hey, this, this is what happens when you do this thing. Right. Which yeah. I think it was it's so poignant kind of blending Good Friday and Easter here, but you talked about the timing yeah. of the yeah. crucifixion, the fact that we had a crucifixion versus if Jesus came today. Yeah. It's there's some real differences in right, the way right. that, that would have taken yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. But to to die on a cross in that day. Yep. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, God yeah. knew what he was doing. Yes. Yeah, the, when, the timing yeah, is so... When he mm -hmm. placed Jesus in that time, yeah, yep. he knew mm -hmm. exactly what he was doing. Yeah. yeah, I get people asking all the time, like, why did why did Jesus come when he came? Why, why didn't he come, you know, when there were cell phone cameras and mm -hmm. stuff? Like, it's like, man, it's, it's an interesting thought mm -hmm. process to go through. But, like, I I think that God orchestrated that moment for a reason. Like, even even for the gospel to be able to spread from that mm -hmm. moment moving forward. Yes. The, the roads that Rome had been adamantly right. building the the connection to other places mm -hmm. like it was like that no this is like the, yeah. the perfect moment paul's in, in prison in rome yeah where all of the news of the world comes from yep. and so luke is able to write <laughs> this beautiful story yep. about mm -hmm. christianity and it gets spread out throughout the entire region and mm -hmm. all over the world yep. like it's strategic and it's perfect yeah. yep that's right beautiful yeah all right, so we got a couple of minutes left. Uh, so the the whole idea really for the series was to to become more like Jesus. Ultimately, it's because of the cross and the empty tomb that we even have the ability right. uh, to live like Jesus. Because because really, I think that's the thing that people need to take away is Old Testament. You were still expected to live like Jesus, yeah. but you didn't have the example to follow. Mm -hmm. And you didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in order to do it. So all you see from Genesis uh, through Malachi is failure. Failure. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it's just over and over again. Like yeah. you're not good enough. Uh, you know, even the best amongst us. Right. Right. You know, Abraham, man of great faith. You know, says his wife is his sister, so that because <laughs> he's yeah. afraid. Right. 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 Like that's not faith. Right. That's right. fear. Right. Um, you know, Noah. You know has this great moment then he gets drunk and you know mm -hmm. passes out naked Some in front of his kids mistakes. like it's like okay <laughs> yeah. like like it's like every That's character as practical that you're like, as it gets <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like but it's like every character like oh this is the good one yeah like, no, uh, no, no, no. Failure, just yeah. keep reading <laughs> right. just keep reading like it's, it's not right. um and so then we get to jesus mm -hmm. and his teachings the example he lays out uh, and then his death and his resurrection. I love, you know, Eugene Peter Peterson's paraphrase where he talks about, you know, Jesus uh, brought s uh, sin down with him mm -hmm. uh, and then brought God down to us. Like, mm -hmm. so like sin no longer has the hold mm -hmm. that it, it used to have. And mm -hmm. so really for, for me, I think, you know, living like Jesus, mm -hmm. you can't talk about living like Jesus and not talk about sin. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, if there was one compliment that I got more than any other that felt weird was how many people thanked me for talking about sin mm. on yeah. Easter Sunday. And I'm mm. like, 
that, that's, that's the whole story. Like that, <laughs> right. that shouldn't be, in you know, hand. praiseworthy. That's that's just like <laughs> right. how do you not yeah, right, like talk right. about sin? But right. I think that in our in our culture, and maybe it's this self centered Christianity that we have, like yeah. we don't like to look at ourselves as sinful, or mm-hmm. we don't like to look at guilt. And but we all have sin. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Short. Right. All. all. Right. Didn't say many of sin. <laughs> yeah. It says all. all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it, and it's and it's in our endeavors to live like Jesus that we have to actually say no to things. And that's right. I think that's what becomes the hardest part is you know we we want to do the stuff that we like. Right. Like hey I I enjoy this. Absolutely. You know Jesus forgives me. Well, you know it's. What does Paul say? You know, should we keep on sinning? So right. that grace may abound. So that grace right. may abound. Yeah. No, no, of course not. Not at all. <laughs> like if, if Brent uh, was paraphrasing that, it would be, no, you idiot. Like, <laughs> like no, like we have to take a stance uh, against sin that, hey, if, if the Bible says this is not good, mm-hmm. don't try and justify it. Right. And, and I see that happen so yeah. often oh, where, yeah. where Christians today will either justify the sin in their life mm-hmm. Or completely ignore it, like mm-hmm. just turn a blind eye and say, "Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to deal with that thing because right. yeah, because I got Jesus." And you know, I, I think we what we tend to do is that we don't call it sin. We say, you know, if I have salvation or if I become a Christian, then I lose the pleasures of life, I lose the things that I like mm-hmm. to do, mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, the pleasures of life. You mean the joy that you have in Christ Jesus, right. who gives you all peace and comfort yeah. and yeah. like. You mean that pleasure? Like, no, no, no. Other pleasures. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean sin. Sin. So let's just call it what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I I think we need to get to a place where we call sin sin. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so what what exactly are you talking about? Because, like, all of my joy and pleasure in my life comes from Christ. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything else outside of that, it's sin. And so I got to call it what it is. And it's like, no, I I can't mess around with it. It is what it is. And Mm -hmm. man, I I heard somebody say when I was, I was probably like 18 and this stuck with me, but he said, uh, why be entertained by something Jesus died to save you from? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And man, there have been times when I'm like, I'm watching a movie and like all of a sudden, like the whole story of the movie is, is about adultery. Basically it's like, you know, Mm. somebody's having an affair and there's drama around (laughs) it and stuff. And I'm, I'm sitting there going. I'm being entertained by yeah. literally yeah. something that Jesus <laughs> yes. went on a cross yeah. to save me from. Right. Like, yeah. Let me turn that off. Right. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. But uh, how how often do we actually turn it off? Mm. How often right. do we yeah. actually say, you know what? Jesus died a an agonizing, horrible death because mm. of sin. Yeah. And here I am being entertained and and finding pleasure in the thing that that killed Jesus. Yeah. Mm. And I love how we had the mirrors all over the church yeah. and the mirrors yeah. on stage. It's like I have to really reflect on my life yeah. and who I am and say, am I living like Jesus? Mm. And there's a realization that, OK, I'm not going to be able to live like Jesus 100 yeah. uh, percent. But my pursuit to be holy, my pursuit for righteousness, my pursuit for salvation, you know, I need to be filled every day. Yeah. You know, the, the Greek term for being filled or being saved is continuous. Yeah. It's I have to be being saved every single day. I have Mm -hmm. to be filled with the spirit every single day. And so I have to constantly reflect on, okay, is today the day that I'm pursuing to be like Christ. Mm -hmm. And so it's the, the effort to pursue being like him that gets me. It's, it's, you know, I'm I'm not going to be like Christ because we've all sinned, but it's that pursuit for holiness and right and, and, and righteousness. Yeah, it's, it is a goal that we will never fully achieve mm-hmm. on this side of heaven. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I think some people will look at that and say, well, then why even try? Mm. Um, and I think that's just the, the worst possible take you can have yeah. on it. It's like, look, I know that I'm not going to be perfect, but man, I'm going to keep trying. Mm. And I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep trying to be better today than I was yesterday. But these are the works that make our salvation complete. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and the scripture says, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. And I think we can, as that self-centered reading can spin that to say what Mm. I've wanted all my life, (laughs) I'm going to get that (laughs) because I love God. Right. And what I actually think he's saying Mm. is, I will change the desires of your heart so that you desire the things that you should desire yeah. Yeah. when you delight in me. Yep. Yep. And yep. and I think that is the way that we walk 
yeah. with Jesus is we delight in the Lord yep. and he yes. gives us and our desires right to be desires. more like him. Well, and here, yes. here's the, the fun thing about that verse. So delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Well, if you're delighting in the Lord, where are your desires? Right. Yes, in the Lord. In the Lord. Yes. So, absolutely. And it's a delight. So yes. like, so like the person that's like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to delight myself in the Lord so that I get a Ferrari. Like, mm. like, like mm. you're, you missed the first part. You're yeah. delighting yourself in the Ferrari. Right. So right. you've already broken the first yeah, part of this thing. Right. Like, well, if you delight in the Lord, then that's where your heart is. That's right. where your desires that's are. That's it. It's about the delight, yeah. taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> good. Right. It's, it's a good yeah. thing. And we want to elevate the things that we were brought out of and say, yeah. well, this was a delight to me right. yeah. then. But now you have a new thing to delight in yeah. and to have yeah. joy from. And there's something way less temporary yeah. to lean into that will sustain you. Yeah. Yep. And, and we just miss that part thinking all I've known is this side of the things that I yep. really loved to do before. Yeah, right. But there is joy. There is goodness. There is delight in the Lord. Yeah. It's just you got to lean in yeah. all the way. And if you don't, you're going to feel like, well, yeah. What and, am I? Uh, this was fun yeah, too. And if you ever tasted and, and saw mm. that, man, God's goodness is greater than anything that you can ever experience right. on earth. Yeah. And I mean everything. Mm. You you can experience everything. It, it, it pales in comparison to right. the goodness of God in our lives. Right. Yeah. And so the more that we taste, the more that we delight, we get to experience that. And we don't have a desire to do anything else. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So for somebody listening right now, that's like, okay, I, I've got, I've got some sin in my life. That's, it's not just like a mistake I made once mm -hmm. or twice or, but like, there's this habitual repetitive, mm -hmm. I know this thing is sin. I keep doing it, whatever, whatever that may be. What, what advice would you guys have for that person? Like how, how do you actually yeah. get free of that sin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, it's the more intimate moments I have with God, the closer right. I get to him. When I draw near to him, he draws near to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And the taste for sin, mm. it it leaves the temptation may always be there right. yeah. for the rest of my life. Right. But my desire to go to it, I love how Jesus changes my trajectory mm -hmm. every time he sees me veering off. Yeah. And it could happen within a in a whisper, mm -hmm. it could happen in tragedy, affliction. Yeah. He gets my attention and gets me back on track. And my I lose the taste for some of the things that I used to have a desire for right. the more that I'm in his presence. Yeah. Right. And it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, if you just try it, if you it's get real. up in the morning and, and dedicate yourself to prayer, mm -hmm. you, you get into the word, mm -hmm. you find a good book to read about Christ. Yeah. Like the more that you pursue him, the less of the world you have a desire for. Yeah. Right. And you won't be able to overcome sin in yourself yep. if that was the case we wouldn't need resurrection sunday we wouldn't need christ right. to come yeah. to redeem us but the more that we focus on christ and make mm -hmm. him a part of our life man the holy spirit works in getting rid of the taste for the things of the world mm -hmm. yeah so that's right that's good i think i think that for me it's the intimacy with the lord it's the yeah. intimacy with the father mm -hmm. that when you walk in his presence no one i know has ever walked into the presence of the lord and walked away not changed yeah. untransformed that's just right. never happened right. yeah. when you walk with the holy spirit when you walk in the presence of the lord when you live yeah. a lifestyle of worship you're entering into the presence honoring him laying yourself down it changes you from within to me it would be the equivalent of me saying i'm going to start eating more vegetables and eating less sugar over time, yes. you're gonna taste sugar in everything that you used to eat. You're gonna go, my chicken nuggets have sugar in them. Yes. I didn't even know there was yeah. sugar here. Cause you don't, you took out, yeah, it's yeah. like, this like my is so, is so sweet. sweet. <laughs> because you got, you got used yeah. to the good thing yeah. and you took out the one thing that you, you feel like maybe I shouldn't have as much of that. And your taste changes. Yeah, you start absolutely. to recognize yeah. more yeah. where things yes. are leading you deeper into sin. Yeah. This, I didn't taste that sugar here before, Yes, and you would but fall there's into a sin. little yeah. bit there. And the Lord just exposes yeah. yes. more and That's more, so good, even in the word. He says, I have, uh, um, the scripture says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against yeah. you. When we continue to hide yeah. the word yeah. and that means it's deep yeah. when it's hidden, it's deep in yeah. there. It comes up and it exposes, things yep. immediately yep. so that we can say 
let me not eat this little sugary yeah, something yeah. or other because it's it's growing my taste for the wrong thing. Yeah. Right, right. Let me keep seeking good. after the good things yeah. and eating that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, taste that's good. See. That's real good. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's this idea that you, you become what you focus on. <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, and so if we're going to become like Jesus, then we're focusing on Jesus. Right. When you, when you focus on sin, you commit sin. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it... It's it's that whole you know joke about you know don't think about a pink elephant, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Immediately going to be thinking about a pink right. elephant. Right. So, yeah. so if your thoughts are always on sinful things, if yeah. you're if you're surrounded by the sinful things, if you're right. surrounded by people that draw you to sinful things, then yeah. that's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. When when you surround yourself with Christ, you become more like Him. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. so where, where's your focus? Yeah. Uh, and it's you know our goal is not necessarily. And I, maybe I got an ugly way to phrase this or a better way to phrase this. Um, but if your focus is in, I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to sin, I don't want to yeah. sin, I don't want right. to sin, I don't want to sin. You're still thinking about sin right. yeah. all the time. But if your thought process is, I want to be like Christ, I want to be as close to Jesus yes. as I can, then you're going to do things that are going to lead you towards him. Right. And you're being led towards Christ. Guess what? You're being led away from sin. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Totally so, different I think mindset. that that's the process. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, this is a great conversation, guys. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was nice uh, hanging Let's out with you. Yeah. We, we made it. Post made Easter, absolutely. we made it. <laughs> yeah. And, hey, ne- next week, I don't know who's going to be on the show with me, but next week is going to be interesting because we're uh, we're doing a hot seat Q&A. Hot seat, from, yeah. From the you asked for it. They're just going to throw questions at me. And, you know, Good I'm gonna, luck. I, I, what I would say <laughs> is uh, Sunday is the kind of Sunday where you decide whether or not CLC is your church. Because mm. uh, if, you've, I'm got a, if you've got a stance in there. a certain way and you're like, maybe CLC feels that way, maybe they don't, you're going to find out you're on gonna Sunday. You're going to find out. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, right. Just ask the question. It's going to be great. And we're not going to apologize about no. it. No. No, no. I'm just going to give it to you straight. It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Truth and love. We did that as a series, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and there's some things I may be wrong about but you know yeah, the mm-hmm. holy spirit will be there That's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> <laughs> and i'll be honest i'll be like hey I, you know what i don't know or hey you know what i'm still developing my views on that yeah. mm-hmm. um you know because there's room for all of us to, to grow and learn and, and all right. that but sunday's gonna be fun it's gonna and be then great. podcast afterwards should be we'll clean up some stuff maybe hopefully <laughs> i mean the bible's not black and white <laughs> no it, it's it not is, a science it's an art <laughs> it is it is an art and a science in interpreting uh scripture but there's uh the interpretation uh it can vary depending on a lot of factors. Mm. We gotta we gotta bridge okay. the gaps. Oh, man, everybody should just listen to, to my see. biblical interpretation <laughs> course. You should, should do that as Fantastic. a series, right? Man, we probably could. At some I don't point. know how many people we would lose, but <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. If people find the Bible boring, then CLC is probably not the truth. No, right. no, no. We, so we are only not, by the you know, book. You can yeah. you can you can not stick with your you know celebrity pastor on YouTube that <laughs> barely talks about the Bible. That's yeah. fine. Yikes. You know, go for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, I didn't name any names. I just, you know, threw out a blanket right. statement about Could be anybody. pastors Can't end that don't a podcast use the about being conversational. <laughs> a little controversy in here. Stick to the book and we'll see you yes. next time on yep. Between Sermons. Nice.